Yo, what's up guys, PK Sparks here, and welcome back to some more Pokemon Sun and Moon news! Now, we already talked about Team Skull, I pretty much gushed all about them. I got everything I needed to out of my system regarding that team. And again, if you guys are not dedicating your life to Guzma and Team Skull, what are you doing? Join the Team Skull Alliance now, Team Skull needs you. But without further ado, let's talk about the brand new three Pokemon that were announced in today's video that was officially announced when it was supposed to be coming live tomorrow, but with all the leaks, I guess Pokemon Company just said, screw it, just put the freaking trailer out there, let's get our own views. If you guys enjoyed this video, demolish the like button for me. The likes have been phenomenal lately. Let's see if we can now reach the goal of 1,000 likes on this video, and if we can, then maybe we can even extend that to further videos. But of course, above all that, I want to know your opinions on the three new Pokemon that were confirmed in the Alola region. The first one I am going to be talking about is More Law. More More Law. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. It's More Law is M-O-R-E-L-U-L-L. -L -L. But go, judging by the name, I'm assuming that it's a Pokemon that wants to put you to sleep. As a matter of fact, its abilities are Illuminate and Effect Spore. Um, what is it? It's a Grass Fairy type, and I'm just like, we don't really need another Grass Fairy type, but it's, it's like, it's, it's a thing, I don't really care, it's, alright, we have a grass fairy, hopefully you evolve into something amazing. But another, again, we have another grass type, and we have another fairy type. The typing is really starting to get really stale in the Alola region, like, has there been a psychic type reveal besides, um, besides, I'm oh, sorry, Alola Raichu and Oricorio? I don't think there is, I... I can't recall anything as a psychic type that's revealed for this island, but I mean, I could be wrong. As a matter of fact, wasn't that, um, that Bruxious Fish a psychic type? If so, then I'm a liar. I'm a liar right there, but still. In any case, going back to what I was saying, um, more laws of Pokemon that pretty much puts your Pokemon, I mean, puts people to sleep. That's the whole idea of it. Like, if you look at its pulsating light on its, like the mushroom, if you look at this mushroom while it's pulsating, then it'll put you to sleep. It has a lulling effect, hence the name Mora Law. Um, otherwise, it kind of reminds me of the Pokemon that evolves into Lorantis. I think it's like Furantis or Fomantis? Fomantis, I believe the name is. But it reminds me of Fomantis, where it sits around, it just it puts down roots, and then it wants to absorb nutrients or photosynthesis, whatever it is. Actually, Moralaw is a nocturnal Pokemon, so he's more or less just getting um, nutrients, uh, other than, I mean, opposite of Fomantis, who is actually getting photosynthesis during the day and then moves during the nighttime. I believe that's how it goes. But it's just the opposite version of that. I don't really. I'm not really interested about it. It does, I mean, its second ability is, or first ability is actually illuminate. So hopefully, its evolution will be phenomenal, or they just give Floor just a grass typing, because that should be grass fairy. That should be grass fairy. But instead, we have a mushroom who's a grass fairy, and I don't understand what it's supposed to be doing. But it has effect spore, and it even used an attack that kind of looked like spore. So, I want to assume that this Pokemon does get Spore, and it's just a new animation. And I say that because it was a Mushroom, it shook, the Spores went out, and then Mudbray went to sleep. So, that's the only attack I know that's in the remotely like that, is Spore. Or, it could be like an attack, an attack that is like Effect Spore, where it will shake its Spore, and then one of three effects will happen. Whether it gets poisoned, whether it gets paralyzed, or whether it gets put to sleep. So, I mean, if that's the case, then that'd be kind of cool as well. But... For now, that's all it is. Moral Law is there, and I can't wait. I, I, I don't imagine you guys having any opinion on this one in the comments, but there it is. Moral Law. Okay, now I normally like saving the best Pokemon for last. I'm not sure which one of these two were, but I decided to talk about Wishy Washy second because Pukamuku had, well, first of all, I love its name, and as much as I love its name, it is actually a really gross Pokemon. I have a lot to say about that one. So let's go on and talk about Wishy Washy. Um,. Okay, so remember in the, I said in the last episode when I talked about Team Skull that there are some things about 7th Gen, I mean there's nothing about 7th Gen that is bad. Yeah, I am a liar. Um, some things that are bad are the names. First we have Beware, and now we have Wishy Washy. Um, um, could, couldn't we have just taken the Japanese name, Yowashi, and just taken that? I understand that localization, they probably said, hey, Americans will probably relate to a name named Wishy Washy more than Yowashi, but... Uh, sometimes Americans don't know what's best. As a matter of fact, most times Americans don't know what's best. Um, so if we could just change that to back to Yowashi, that would be appreciated. That's a much better name than Wishy Washy. That, I'm not saying that. I'm saying I'm calling it Wishy. Or I'm calling it Washy. I, I would probably just call it Yowashi. You know what? I'm calling it Yowashi. 
Screw it. I'm not going by his American name. The name is Yowashi. It is a water type, and his ability is the most intriguing part about this Pokemon. The ability is schooling. Now, hear me out. Schooling is an ability that alters the Pokemon's form in battle. Um, means that it goes from its single form, which is a singular Yowa singular Yowashi, to a, its school form, which is like 100 Yowashi. And they come together to form a giant behind submarine, po po submarine shaped Pokemon that is pretty much on kin with the size of a Gyarados, if not bigger than a Gyarados. As a matter of fact, the Pokédex entry literally reads that Gyarados runs in fear of Yowashi in its school form. Even Gyarados flee from Yowashi's school form. That's what it says right there. It's freaking powerful. Now, the Pokémon is tiny. It's only 8 inches. So, to go from an 8 inch size Pokémon to reach the size and the span of a Gyarados, somebody out there who is good with math and no and uses the uh, the imperial system please let me know how many yawashis it will take to reach the length and the width and the height of a of a gyarados with an eight inch yawashi and let me know i need to know how many it takes because that's how many yawashis come together to make yawashi school form because it's bigger than a gyarados and a gyarados is like 16 feet long or something like that as a matter of fact let's look it up right now how long is that sarah g Sarah B, Gyarados. All right, we're gonna find out exactly how long Gyarados is. Gyarados is 21 feet long. What the heck? He is 518 pounds. Oh my, yo, yo, Washi school form is gigantic. It's freaking wild. But I, like I said, I do love the Pokemon. I love the concept of it, and that's Yowashi for you. So. Um, what is it? The thing about Yowashi is that I feel like when it's in a school form, it's going to be the Magikarp of the Alola region. It doesn't really do much, and most often than not, it's just crying out for help. But it becomes a threat when it, it when it's in its school form, because the entire, entire form is just a bunch of Yowashi come together and say, Hey, we're bigger than, than you. We're giving the bear tactic, you know, be bigger than your enemy. So that's the concept of uh, Yowashi. I love it. I think it's going to be decent. Um, I can't wait to actually try it out in battle. And let me know what you think. Do you think that this Pokemon is going to have any competitive use? Do you think it's in incredibly gimmicky and it will just fall to the wayside? Because a lot of people are comparing it to Zenmo Darmanitan. And to be honest, it's quite opposite of Zenmo Darmanitan because Darmanitan has to be hurt in order to go to Zenmo Zen mode. But then it even loses speed, so it can't even retaliate when it's already hurt at 50%. Yo, while she comes into the battle and it's at full health and it goes into a school form and it doesn't get knocked out of its school form until its HP reaches a certain percentage, which we don't know yet. But whatever that percentage is, I'm sure we'll find out once the game releases. So it's a little different, a little backwards, so it'll probably even be a lot better than um, Zen Mode Demantian. Not in typing, but in like in concept of it. So let me know what you think about your Yowashi competitively in the comment section below. I think that it'll either be um, low tier UU or high tier RU. It's, it sounds decent, but again, we don't know the stats, and that is always what determines these things, is the stats of the Pokemon. But for now, Yowashi, you are you're kind of intriguing, buddy. Okay, so you know how Pokemon in the love region tend to have a pretty sad story. While Pyukumuku's story does not beat Mimikyu's story, I still think Mimikyu is adorable and I'm going to have one on my team no matter what. I'm going to let it know that I am its friend. I love Mimikyu. Make sure you guys go check out that video where I talked about Mimikyu in case y'all missed my opinion. Cause it's so sad. It's so sad how Mimikyu is treated. But you know what? Pimikyu's, uh, Pyukumuku's life is not exact. There's a lot of K and U's in this region, isn't there? Huh. Nice in Hawaii. Nice in Hawaii. Anyway, Pyukumuku's story is not much, uh, much less sad. Um, they, I'm just gonna read this Pokédex for y'all. Due to their appearance and their lifestyle, Pyukumuku are considered unappealing to tourists. Oh, okay. First line, and everybody who sees it, even tourists, are just gross. But then again, I think the same darn thing. It's so disgusting. It wants to be a bunny so bad, and yet it's gross. And unfortunately, as you read its story, not only does it become more sad, but it becomes even more gross. Part-time work chucking Pyukumuku back into the sea is available at tourist beaches. So you can be hired to pick up these things and throw them back in the ocean. Not give them a good habitat. Not put them in a crate and then release them like a hundred feet into the water or something like that. No, you pick them up and you throw them into the ocean. What if you have bad aim? What if there are rocks in the ocean? What if there's something you just can't see? What if it just, you throw it and then it just... 
bam, like right on a rock or a cliff or whatever. Or what, what if the force of it when it hits the water actually kills the darn thing or gives it some sort of damage? This is not cool. Why are you chucking these things? They don't look solid. They don't look hard. They don't look like a rock type. As a matter of fact, they're pure water type. So we know they're not a rock type. So why are we doing this? Why are we chucking Pukumukus back into the water? But you know what? They're resilient. Here's been going back to the Pokedex entry. But no matter how far they're thrown, Pyukumuku will always return to the same spot. So they're just like, you can do whatever you want, I'm simply mad. Once a Pyukumuku finds a place it likes, it won't budge from it. Now, listen, it won't budge. That line cannot be taken more literal than with this Pokemon. If someone moves it away, it comes back to the same spot. If it runs out of food in, to eat in, this, in that spot, okay, let me read that again. If it runs out of food to eat in that spot, It'll stay there and starve. So, Pyukumukus are stubborn little sea cucumbers. Alright then. The people of Alola found this so pitiful that they developed a tradition of chucking Pyukumukus back into the food rich sea whenever they come across any thin bellied Pyukumuku. So, the concept is decent. The idea is nice. The actions, uh, I still disagree with chucking Pyukumukus, but. At the same time, it's like you just want to help them, but again, can't you just like put them in a crate and or a fish tank and just drop them off in the water? Why do you have to throw them? Oh, it's like a childish game. But anyway, it gets even worse because people actually pick these things up and throw them. But hear me out. Pyukumukus are covered with a slippery, viscous fluid that has a moisturizing effect. Pyukumuku can stay on land for a week without drying out. That's kind of wild, that's kind of decent, kind of like the, the camel of the, you know, Pokemon War types. Alright, that's pretty decent, shout out to your survivability, even though you're starving yourself. The people of Alola use this fluid for skin care products. Alright, and there is the usage of the Pokemon. So this Pokemon's life is just completely sad. All it wants to do is just sit there, and then even if it sits there, it starves itself. But then the Poke people who see it, they want to throw it into the ocean, but then it's just like, it doesn't want to be moved, so it comes back anyway to the same spot where it was starving at. So it's like determined to starve, but the people just want to help it, so they throw it back into the ocean. It's, this is such a sad life! Why are Pyukumukus like this? I don't get it! And it gets worse! Pyukumukus hate to have their spikes and miles touched, so I don't want to touch it at all. You you look gross. I'm telling you that right now. You look gross, but I hope your pink spikes turn green when you're shiny. But you look gross. If you step on one, it'll hurl out its fist-like inner organs to strike at you. Now hear me out. You accidentally step on a Pyukumuku. You already have the spikes dug into you. At the same time, it will hurl out its inner organs shaped like a fist and hit you if you step on it you're getting spikes in your foot and the inner organ fist to your face i'm good this pokemon is so weird i don't know who's going to use it i don't know why is anyone's going to use it actually you know what i am lying i know exactly why they're going to use it because i'm not done with this pokemon its ability gets even worse so its ability is called innards out Yep, they couldn't have come up with a less gross name than that. Entered out. And it's essentially a destiny bond and a pain split. Oh, sorry, or aftermath in a way. Hear me out. Pretty, let's say that Pukumuku has 100 HP. And let's say that you use Guillotine. Guillotine one-shots the Pokemon. All 100 HP of that Pokemon is gone. Now, let's say the Pokemon that used Guillotine was um, Krabby. Krabby's HP isn't the greatest, it's not bad, but it's not the greatest. When he has guillotine, he'll probably have like, mm, let's say 98 HP. Because you used a move that did 100 hit points of damage and knocked it out, enters out, activates, and it's a retaliation attack that does the same amount of damage to the opponent that the attack did when it knocked it out. So Krabby loses 100 HP, because he only has 98, he is instantly knocked out. Which means that one shot in this Pokemon will actually be detrimental to you. Does this mean that this Pokemon will have an opportunity to set up in the future? Yes, sir. Does it mean that people are going to want to start using false swipe in order to catch this Pokemon? Yes, sir. Is the fact that even and not to mention, I think from the Japanese gameplay trailer, I forgot to mention this, but the Japanese gameplay trailer showed Pyukumuku and it looked like this Pokemon had pain split. So you weaken the Pokemon, the enemy target Pokemon. You strengthen yourself, 
They one shot you anyway, and then because you'll most likely have the same amount of HP if you outspeed them, that means that you one shot them instantly. Oh, they one shot themselves. It was it was on a Hirayama. So Pukumuku, you are just a weird Pokemon. I'm not sure if you're good or bad. I know you're gross. I know I don't ever want to see you. And I damn well know I don't want to touch you. But uh you are a weird Pokemon. That's why I wanted to see if you can move for last, because I had so much to say about this Pokemon. It's a little lot. It's just strange, but these Pokemon that they are cranking out, I can't say I hate this region. Whether I love the Pokemon or I hate the Pokemon, the Pokemon is just great, no matter what. Alright, so I told you, I had a lot to say, but we are done. That's all the three new Pokemon. I will be talking about Alola Raichu, Alola Marowak, and Alola Meowth in just a little bit, hopefully later on tonight. If you guys enjoyed this video, demolish the like button for me. And again, let's try to reach the goal of 1,000 likes on this video. Most importantly, I want to know your thoughts on all these Pokemon. More along. Um, Yawashi or Wishiwashi if you refuse to use the Japanese name and of course Pyukumuku I want to know all these names in the com or your opinions on these Pokemon in the comment section below Make sure you guys like the video comment the video follow me on Twitch follow me on Twitter subscribe to me on YouTube But most importantly stay hot guys. I'll see y'all next time